The Hmong have always been a minority within a minority. We've endured war, slavery, and genocide. Our arrival here in America as refugees 45 years ago was the direct result of fighting alongside the United States during the Vietnam War when we rescued American pilots and disrupted the Ho Chi Minh Trail. My own mother trekked for 13 days through body littered mountains and blood-stained jungles for a slim chance at freedom. At one point, she became so ill, she was left to die underneath a tree. But from the depths of the refugee camps, a new set of challenges awaited us right here in America. Culture shock and post-traumatic stress disorder ravaged our communities, crippling many and forcing its children to grow up beyond their years. I was one of those children. I grew up within the social and political constructs of the Hmong culture. I have seen and experienced firsthand the fluidity of our culture, its progression, its beauty, and its pain. So while it was not without significant challenges that we were able to retain our identity and carry it with us from the mountains of Southeast Asia to America, the intricacies of our culture is understood by few, including those within. Had elected officials like Bobby Singh Allen been the social justice warrior she considers herself to be, she might have hesitated to paint our Hmong people with such a broad and bigoted stroke. She might have been a little less reckless when using her position of privilege and power to speak about an entire culture of whom she has limited knowledge of. She might have lived up to her moral and professional responsibility as a community leader to research and to identify the acculturation issues and educational needs of the Hmong community before blasting us as a culture who intimidates and silences women. The women who've risen within the Hmong culture did not do so without the support of their men. The courage of our ancestors and of our parents in the face of war, slavery, and genocide paved the way for the preservation of our people, of our culture, so that we may live as free people. But the dismissal of our voices and the silence of some elected officials on the slandering of our ethnic community, it's indicative of the normalization and pervasiveness of anti-Asian sentiments that continues to plague the larger society today. It's why local news organizations continue to pump out article after article denigrating the Hmong community and portraying us under a singular perspective. It's why concerned parents and community members alike have been labeled attack dogs, sheep, surrogate mouthpieces, and that's just to name a few. It's why some elected officials continue to evade accountability for the hatred they've incited against our people. Our culture is not perfect. There's much that needs to be improved. And at times, it may seem that the pace at which our culture is evolving just isn't fast enough. But changes come through constructive dialogue, not through misinformed, irresponsible, and provocative statements. The means and the tactics we use will determine whether those changes will come about constructively or destructively. Before I hand this over to the next speaker, I just want to thank everyone who's here today in support of the Hmong community and in support of all the communities who have been victimized by the very leaders and by the very institutions we have placed our trust in. And I'd like to leave you with a quote by an early 1900s missionary named Samuel Clark who worked and lived among the Hmong people in China for a time. It must be remembered that some of these Hmong tribes have been widely separated in time and space, so that what may truly be said of some of them may not be true of all. And here, it might as well be admitted that we who have been so much among them have yet a good deal to learn. And possibly, something of what has been learned has not been properly understood. Thank you.
Hi everyone, thank you for coming to join us today. The City of Elf Grove has shown me some major concerns the past months as a constituent and a mother of two Elk Grove Unified School students. I am a resident of Elk Grove. I, along with my husband and children, have vested our life living here in the City of Elk Grove. We moved to Elk Grove because we had high regards for the City of Elk Grove and Elk Grove Unified School District. Elk Grove has so many things to offer that we felt it was the best place to raise our children. From the splash pads to the Elk Grove Regional Park, there were countless of things our family could do. The school ratings, the diversity, the recreational activities, and the safe environment that the City of Elk Grove provides to its citizens were among the many things my husband and I took into consideration before moving here. Today, I am saddened by the actions of Bobby Singh Allen, a school board trustee and an elected that we trust to protect our school and students, have taken against me as a parent and a person of Hmong descent. It is quite appalling that the Elk Grove Unified School District, which is the fifth largest district in the state of California with more than 63,000 students, still allowed racist remarks made by Bobby Singh Allen. They have yet to condemn her for her actions or her choice of words. Does silence mean acceptance? Does my concern as a parent mean nothing? Every outcry there were in the last few weeks from concerned parents, constituents, and community leaders were dismissed. We were labeled as Mayor Steve Lee's associates. Everyone, including the district, turned a deaf ear to the Hmong community. Today we are here to show that we cannot be silenced. I want to leave you with this thought before I go to the, uh, leave it to the next speaker. If today the target is the Hmong community, who's going to be next? Thank you. When I say justice, you say now. Justice! 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 Good evening, parents, students, community in Elk Grove. My name is Marie Vu. I want to thank each and every one of you for your for sparing your moment to come out and support us tonight. I am first generation American born. I grew up in the northern I grew up in Northern California in the mid 80s and early 90s. I have lived through being targeted because of my race. I have lived through being targeted because I spoke another language. I knew how that felt. It is concerning that in 2020, when racial tensions and crimes against the Asian American has skyrocketed, elected officials such as Bobby Singh Allen and Jacqueline Moreno feel that it is okay to release hurtful and damaging statements about the Hmong community. Their false perception of the Hmong culture and community has inspired racial attacks on us. Let me tell you, Bobby Singh Allen is a board of trustee in California's fifth largest district. Elk Grove Unified has an estimated 65,000 students. 31% of them are Asian Americans. That equates to approximately 20,000 some students that are Asian American. The district receives $71 million in a year for Asian Pacific Islander students here in in our growth, where did all, all that money go? Don't it on each ball of Unified School District, Asian American, okay? Lu district not Ishong. Lu district not Tautai, Shatio Ilan, Tobito Mio Duha, Tanyan the Doti Dalla. Something I want you guys to think about. With Bobby's clouded judgment on a community of color, can she continue to represent the student and family in her district without bias? 
Anyone who has stood up against her has been called a Steve attack dog. Is this person, is this a person we need as a leader? Rather than work the bridge and to bridge the gap between the constitu constitutions and officials in the community, Bobby divided the community. Tonight, I ask Elkgrove and neighboring communities to wake up, stand with the Hmong community in solidarity, denounce the hate. Bobby Singh Allen has got to go. My message tonight to you, Bobby, do Elkgrove a favor, get the heck out. My message to Linda Vu, my message to Linda Vu, your personal upbringing does not define my culture, your personal experience does not define my culture. I challenge you to get out and learn about your culture. Bobby, Linda, Jax, and Jacqueline, the Hmong community refused to be a casualty of your words. The more you try to silence us, the more we will rise. You may not doubt one of us today, but tomorrow, 10 of us gonna rise. Thank you.